In the two years of AEW's existence, no character has gotten over as quickly or as big as Orange Cassidy. He's become their laid-back, super-cool breakout star. In fact, it's even been reported that the upper brass of Turner Broadcasting were fans of the character. But how did it happen? What's he all about? Where'd Orange Cassidy even come from? Let's take a look and profile this one-of-a-kind character. Now, if you're watching this, I know you're familiar with the sloth-like Orange Cassidy, but you may not be aware of his original, more generic incarnation, plain indie wrestler Orange Cassidy. I first heard about Cassidy when he was getting dark and undercard matches for Ring of Honor back in 2008 and 2009. He obviously didn't impress enough to get a roster spot at the time, but he'd also get overlooked in the indie scene in general, getting lost in the vast amount of incredible talent on the scene at the time. But he'd find his way. While Orange Cassidy was struggling to stand out and for bookings, his alter ego Fire Ant was fastly making a name for himself all over the East Coast independent scene. Cassidy would use Fire Ant as cover and as the larger than life character he had yet to develop without the mask. Cassidy would work mostly as Fire Ant until about 2015 when he would focus on his new persona, a lackadaisical spoof of a wrestler. In 2016 and 2017, Orange Cassidy took the U.S. independence by storm. He was getting booked on almost every show imaginable and winning over wrestling fans everywhere. And he did so without really doing much. Cassidy had created a character that was a good wrestler, but didn't really want to wrestle. He'd go through the motions and lazily attempt moves that fans had become accustomed to seeing, and he'd avoid attacks from his opponents with his hands in his pockets. But eventually, something will set him off. Either his opponent's constant persistence on actually wrestling a match, insulting him a bit too much, a championship, or, most admirable, attacking his friends. These are the things that drive Cassidy to actually try, and to actually wrestle a match. And when he does, he's damn impressive. Of course, he still tries to keep his hands in his pockets if possible. Cassidy had figured out a character that allowed him to stand out and to conserve a few spots on his bump cart. He didn't need to take major risks or really do too many bumps in matches to get the crowd behind him. He was different, and people loved his shtick. The King of Sloth Style's popularity would continue to grow as he'd become the independent wrestling champion, a prestigious championship that he'd proudly bring to the ring in a Jansport backpack. This level of stardom offered Cassidy a new opportunity with a newly founded company, All Elite Wrestling. When Cassidy was announced for AEW in 2019, fans that were already familiar were both excited for the exposure he'd have but also curious how a new company making a big splash on national television would use someone so unique. And the answer was simple. Let him be Orange Cassidy, but on national television. And for fans that were experiencing Cassidy for the first time, they found a new character they could get behind, who was unlike anyone they'd seen before. But with more eyeballs on Cassidy than ever, came criticism. Wrestling has always been a subjective art form and for many wrestling is something that should be taken seriously on all fronts. It should be protected, it should be presented in one way, and its participants should all function the same way. As much as wrestling was built by big tough guys, there were also some that provided laughs. Orange Cassidy has just taken the two aspects of the business that we have loved for decades and combined them into one character. He'll make you laugh with his passive maneuvers, but then make you jump up and cheer when he punches his foe right in the face. The same people who told wrestlers for years to slow down and do less were now mad that Orange Cassidy was doing almost nothing at all in his matches. Despite the detractors, Cassidy has gone on to become one of AEW's most popular and marketable stars, 
every type of merchandise possible from AEW features Orange Cassidy. An action figure, beach towels, face masks, lazy foam thumbs, and his t-shirts are consistently top sellers. He's also their most cosplayed star. Everyone wants to be Orange Cassidy, even the boss gone to the act in Halloween. Cassidy rode this wave of popularity into a major feud with Chris Jericho in the summer of 2020. While Cassidy was already very over, this war with the legendary Jericho propelled him to a level of credibility he hadn't yet had in the company. We got to see a different side to the character. He got to show his toughness, and he got to express himself as someone not to be messed with despite his demeanor. And at the end of it, he didn't beat Jericho because of a humorous fluke or assistance from best friends. He beat him because he was the better wrestler. Almost a year later, Cassidy would find himself climbing the ranks and challenging along with Pac against Kenny Omega in the main event of this year's Double or Nothing for the AEW World Championship. While Omega would retain, Cassidy was within a hair of becoming the new champion on several occasions, in an absolutely fantastic main event. It's hard to say what may be next for freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. He's a talent that the audience will always be ready to get behind whenever he's given a big opportunity. He may continue to sniff the world championship. I can definitely see him becoming TNT champion someday. Who knows, if the rumored trios championship becomes reality, maybe Best Friends and Cassidy become the first champions for that title. Whatever it is that's next, I'll be watching, and I'm sure it'll be entertaining as hell. I'm Scott the Fat Mark. Thanks for watching.